Hey guys, welcome to Bastion Time. I am your host, Bastion. This is Nintendo News. Let's get to that news. Now, first of all, um, we had an interesting interview from Mr. Awanuma talking about one thing in Breath of the Wild that will be drastically different than what we've seen before. Well, I mean, let's be real here. It looks like everything is going to be drastically different, but this one we didn't quite know about until about now, which is Dungeons. All right, he's apparently saying he's t they've taken a brand new approach to how dungeons exist in a Zelda game. Um, specifically things like there will be fewer of them and that the ones that are there will be shorter and radically differently designed. He specifies that in older Zelda games, he felt like the dungeons were a lot shorter um, and so that in recent Zelda games, they've become way too big. And I would kind of agree with that, although I will say that I felt like they fixed this with Skyward Swords dungeons. Um, putting all of those different save statue things, those bird statues in the Skyward Sword dungeons, fixed that problem for me. Because in Twilight Princess, yeah, I was feeling pretty fatigued. Um, basically having to go through a whole three-hour dungeon or whatever. Uh, sure, you can save, but then you have to like go back to the beginning of the dungeon. I loved how in Breath of the Wild, I'm sorry, in Skyward Sword, you could save at a statue, multiple statues throughout dungeons, and then turn the game off and come back when you've had your dinner or whatever. I loved that. So I felt like they already solved this, but I guess the new solution is just make those dungeons smaller. So... That'll be interesting to see how that works out. He did say, though, that it wasn't just that they were going to be smaller and fewer, but just the way they're designed is totally different. So it'll be interesting to see what the heck that means. Our next story is about that Castlevania cartoon adaption um, that is being made, we thought, for Nickelodeon, but it turns out, no, it's actually being made for Netflix, um, which is interesting because the guy behind it specifically said Nickelodeon, I thought, but maybe I misread that interview. In any case, um, a lot of people were wondering how could it possibly be an authentic Castlevania adaption if it's going to be for Nickelodeon? Surely that they'll take out all the gore and everything. Apparently that will not be the case now that it's for Netflix because according to the guy behind it, it's going to be R-rated AF. So that'll be pretty interesting to see. If you want to read more about that, there is a link down there for you. Our next story is a bit of controversy over at Nintendo of Spain. Apparently they had a contest um, to select some people to come to the Switch hands-on experience and they had this contest, they posted the winners and everybody noticed, wait a minute, there's something familiar about all of these winners. It turns out that they all either had direct connections to Nintendo or that they were affiliated with Nintendo through a partnership program or something. And so this was pointed out, and then suddenly we have a new set of winners. So I wonder what happened there. I'm just kidding, I know exactly what happened there. Um, but at least they fixed it, even if their original selections were corrupt. Our final story for the day is not an upper, um, it's, it's a downer, and it's about the fact that there was this Zelda fan um, who was really looking forward to Breath of the Wild coming out, but also, unfortunately, pretty sure he wasn't going to make it because he had terminal cancer, um, so he was really worried. I'm probably not going to be around when it comes out, so even though I'm really excited for this amazing looking game, I'm not going to get a chance to play it. And you might say, well, surely there are more important things to be worried about, but I think we can all agree as Zelda fans, if we had some sort of terminal illness and this amazing looking Zelda game was coming out, of course that would be one of the things on our mind. Um, so anyways, it became known to Nintendo that this was the case, so they, back in October or so, invited him up to Nintendo of America and let him sit down and play a uh, build of Breath of the Wild for, like, all day, um, which isn't the same as getting to play through the whole game, but anyway, at least he got to play something, and, uh... Um, so that's the nice part of the story, but the unfortunate part of the story is last month he did end up passing away, of course, before Breath of the Wild came out, so that's unfortunate. I mean, that's an understatement, but um, when I read this story, I was just like, you know, you can't help putting yourself in that position thinking about it, 
and it, it would just, uh, it would be terrible. But um, anyways, that's it for this episode. See you guys tomorrow for happier news. See you then. Bye, guys.